from where you now are lies Angler's Paradise, adventure land in Alaska. Land of the midnight sun, home of the biggest and scrappiest fish on earth. Modern jet air transportation makes it easy to get there, like traveling on a breeze. Your local airline or travel agent or a letter to Northern Consolidated Airlines, Anchorage, Alaska, can arrange for your ticket for a thrill of your lifetime. A few hours after leaving your home, you'll be seeing some of the most spectacular and exciting country on Earth. For this is the route to the Katmai country, a land where the forces that created the Earth are still at work. A land of breathtaking beauty, a primitive land, only recently touched by modern civilization. This is Western Alaska, served today by Northern Consolidated Airlines, Alaska's leading home-owned airline. Using multi-engine aircraft to connect bustling northern cities with remote hinterland settlements in the vast sweep of tundra, mountains, lakes, and rivers. Home of the pioneer, home of the Eskimo. Friendly folk, these Eskimos, who have long known this as an angler's paradise. For fishing is a way of life with the Eskimos of western Alaska. There's many a dinner hanging on this rack. And with the salmon in the village of Aniak on the Kuskokwim River, there'll be potatoes too. Your northern consolidated prop jet liner lands at King Salmon, jumping off point for the vacation of your life. At King Salmon, you transfer from the prop jet to the smaller but equally reliable twin engine Cessna Bushmaster. In just 20 minutes, Brooks Camp comes into view. This will be your headquarters for enjoying Angler's Paradise. Landing at Brooks, you'll find a well-organized and friendly camp crew waiting to welcome you anxious to make your stay pleasant and enjoyable. Here, memories are made. Although situated deep in the rugged wilderness, the Katmai camps of Northern Consolidated Airlines have the finest possible wilderness accommodations. Neat log and tent cabins, spring mattress beds, gas heaters for cool nights, shower facilities. After a hearty breakfast, those who like to fish from a boat may board a cruiser, move out into the lake to fish the river mouths and bays. From the end of June through July, sockeye salmon move into these waters by the thousands and can be taken on lures as well as flies. In a beautiful setting with dawn lighting the distant peaks, you begin casting. Wham! You've got a fighting fish on your line. It's a sockeye salmon of beauty. 
It's no trick tying into a package of fighting dynamite, for this is the most prolific salmon spawning area in the world. After several adult years in the ocean, sockeye salmon returned to the Katmai country where they were born. Their mission, to lay eggs anew and repeat their life cycle. Sockeyes in vast numbers in lakes and streams of the sprawling virgin Katmai country in turn make life easy for several other species of fighting game fish. Giant pugnacious rainbow trout that rush to hit at fly and lure. Graceful grayling and dolly varden. Mackinac and lake trout, giant northern pike. For many of these game fish feed on salmon eggs and salmon fingerlings, thus nourished grow fat and sassy. The legend has grown that no fisherman has ever come to the Katmai country without catching all the fish that he or she wanted, no matter what the species. King salmon, prize of them all, may be taken within a few flying minutes from Brooks Camp and run from 10 to 50 pounds. As exciting as the catch is the eating, a taste thrill prepared by expert camp cooks. Mealtime is one of the highlights of camp life. Stores at Brooks and Kulig camps carry complete lines of tackle. Everything to make your visit more complete in every way. This is a well-organized and operated enterprise, with the addition of new and more adequate facilities going up each season. One of the wonders at Brooks Camp comes when you toss a rock into the water. It floats. For these are rocks of pumice, a product of the violent explosion of nearby Mount Katmai in 1912. For those who can spare a few minutes from fishing, there is water skiing and swimming on Naknek Lake. Long hours of warm summer sunlight are good for a spin on the lake. In the Katmai country, there is no end to the enjoyment of virgin lakes and rivers where, except for accessibility now provided by reliable twin-engine airplanes, no one would be doing any fishing at all. Here in Battle River, you see the sockeye salmon run at its height. Everywhere you look, fish and more fish. And following the current downstream, you see their backs as they wriggle over the shallows. Rainbow, grayling, and lake trout swarm these waters. Here, there are no tackle restrictions. Anything goes. Famous for its game fish, battle is unequaled for its sweeping vistas, mountains and sky. Here is Western Alaska at its best, in the upland Katmai country, where every lake is a jewel set in the ring of Alaskan peaks where waters clear as crystal flow only to bring the angler fish he has always dreamed of. Near battle is Kulik River, where the catch also is good. And you can bet that both rainbow trout and pretty angler will be welcomed by all hands. If you're not relaxing at the large new log lodges at Kulik, or Brooks River, it doesn't take long to interest a rainbow trout with your lure. 
Even the little fellows are game. But since he was caught with a barbless hook, it's easy to set him free. See you next year, little fella. There isn't any fish in the Katmai country that doesn't put up a lively fight. But the sockeye salmon have a fight all their own. Fresh from their long sojourn at sea, the sockeyes seem to carry a chip on their shoulders as they return to their birthplace. Although possessed of primordial determination to complete their life cycle, sockeye salmon in the Katmai country are ready for a scrap at the drop of a fly. Sometimes seeming to strike at lures not to obtain food, but more in anger often getting foul hook in the process. Their main urge, of course, is to get to their spawning area, come what may. of the angling in the Katmai country, Northern Consolidated Airlines invited an expert, Chief Nidabe, to come and try his luck. Seeing Brooks Falls for the first time, the chief just couldn't believe his eyes. This was angler's paradise, for sure. So, on goes a ready streamer. That's called an Indian blessing. Acrobatics. Although the lower end of Brooks River is open for spin fishing and casting with lures, here at Brooks River Falls only fly fishing is allowed. And it was not long before the chief had filed the barb off his hook to make releasing of sockeyes and rainbows much easier. After a mighty busy day in Brooks River, Chief Nidabe had hooked, played, and released more than 600 pounds of salmon and rainbow trout. And it was a tired but exultant chief who made his way downstream to the dinner table that evening. While he was in the Katmai country, Chief Nidabe tried his luck on grayling, which are most plentiful in Alaska, although they have all but disappeared in the States. Highly prized for eating, grayling just can't resist a dry fly. So let's see what happens. Wham! and 
rushes all over the stream. Excellent fighters for their size and weight, grayling are noted for the gentlemanly manner in which they take the dry fly. Any dry fly, it seems, for Chief Nidabe tried every fly in his kit that day. And the grayling, they liked every one of them. One thing about fishing in the Katmai country, it's never crowded except by the fish. And when you climb down a bank covered with wild roses, well, you may take something like this off your line. Graceful in contour and with a perceptible aroma of thyme about them, the grayling is noted for its large rainbow-colored dorsal fin. country, here's all you have to do. Just release most of the fish you catch. Matching your muscles against those of each fish on the end of your line is just one tug of war after another. And if you don't watch out, you may come home with a collection something like this, which is just about all anybody can carry. This is a Katmai Mackinac trout. Fishing in the Katmai country, you don't waste any time at all. After you've tried the fishing at one spot, you climb into a safe, powerful, twin-engined, eight-passenger Cessna Bushmaster to fly in a matter of minutes to the next spot. When it's summer in the Katmai country, days are 18 hours long. With five fishing camps to cover, man, you'll need an airplane, for there's something special at every single camp. filled with fishermen is headed for Grosvenor Camp, situated on a point of land between Grosvenor and Coville Lakes. Like all the Katmai country, Grosvenor Camp is beautiful, just as if it were in a park, which incidentally it is. For this is part of Katmai National Monument, one of the largest and certainly the most primitive of our national park areas. On a fine day, even a fisherman would have to lay aside his rod and soak in the quiet beauty lying all around. For here is primitive wilderness as nature would have it. Less than 50 feet from the dinner table at Grosvenor, let's land a rainbow. There. Now watch.
Here comes the lure. There's the rainbow. Uh-oh, you turn back. Well, let's try it again. There's the spot. Here comes the daredevil. Here's the trout. Wham! Man, oh man, ride him, fella. Ride him. Oops, the trout threw the lure. Now let's follow one all the way through. Here comes the lure again. And the trout. Wham! And this time he hangs on. Boy, look at those acrobatics. Yes, sir. These giant cat my rainbows sometimes throw their own book of tricks right back at the angler. And it's a whale of a lot of fun. my rainbow. Royal game fish if we ever saw one. Say, do you know of any fish more beautiful than a cat my rainbow trout? And after that fight, he earned his freedom. Believe it or not, even though this is Alaska, the water is warm enough to go swimming. Relaxing on the beach is better. out of this world. A flight to the Valley of 10,000 Smokes with its collection of volcanoes. For many visitors to the Katmai country, this is the climax to a perfect vacation. Here you can fly over one of the most desolate and remote areas on the North American continent. Because here, less than 50 years ago, a series of gigantic explosions blew five cubic miles of mountain into the sky while great fissures opened up in the earth and flooded the entire valley floor with white hot sand. Sand in which thousands of vents belched forth gas and vapor for years, giving the valley its name. Today, several dozen vents or fumaroles remain issuing constant streams of warm vapor from cavernous holes leading down to inner fires of the earth. Surrounding the Valley of 10,000 Smokes are a number of active volcanoes whose internal fires belch forth large columns of smoke and vapor. And even streams of lava which run down the slopes and leave black tongues of newborn rock. The 
volcano in the valley is Novorupta, whose tiny cone, seen closely, is a mass of hot cinders. The largest crater is that of Mount Katmai itself, where a peaceful blue lake today belies the violence where in 1912 some of the Earth's hottest fires arose, scattering ash all over the world. To experience these same never-to-be-forgotten thrills of the fabulous Katmai country, contact your local airline or travel agent, or write Northern Consolidated Airlines at Anchorage, Alaska. They'll be happy to write your ticket for adventure in the land of the midnight sun.